Right now, we are joined by Pastor Andrew Owen in Scotland. Uh, my dear brother, thanks so much for calling the line of fire today. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Greetings from a very wet Scotland. Yes, well, nothing new about Scotland being wet, correct? That's true. Yeah, so my my dear brother, please tell our listeners in America and on internet around the world, please let them know exactly what you are dealing with in Scotland, which as far as you know is unprecedented in 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 your nation. That's correct, uh, Dr. Brown. We're facing a challenge that as far as you're aware has never happened before. Um we host an annual conference in a publicly owned conference center in the city of Edinburgh. And we've used this center before in years gone by, and we booked it again for this year, only to find that a few weeks ago they canceled and terminated our contract and terminated our booking. And the reason they gave was that one of our keynote speakers, Larry Stockstill from the States, had written in a book or in some blogs that he's posted his view on Christian marriage, his view on homosexuality, and so on. And uh, because of that opinion, that thought, that idea that he held, they cancelled our contract. And it's the first time, not just in Scotland, but in the UK, that a church has actually been locked out of a venue that's owned by the city. And of course, at the same time, in the city of Glasgow, Franklin Graham was also locked out of the exhibition centre there for similar reasons. So we have a very unusual situation going on at the moment in that we, the church, Destiny Church, are having to take the city to court in pursuit of our human rights. Mm. And, and look, I, I know Larry Stock still, and I'm on the front lines of the culture wars in America, and Larry Stock still is not known for that. He's, he's one of the leading pastors in America, highly respected, but he's not known for speaking out about issues on homosexuality as, say, Franklin Graham is known so Larry Stockstill is just a pastor who happens to believe what the Bible says about these issues. And yet, because he was one of the speakers and had one time affirmed that marriage is a union of one man and one woman, and a complaint came to the city that they're locking you out. So we're not exaggerating this. And, and how many people complained and made a fuss about this? In, in Edinburgh, one. Yeah, one person. Just one person. In, in Glasgow, with the Franklin Graham, there were hundreds of people who complained there. But for us, we're a local church. We're heavily involved with the community. We have lots of social action things going on. We, we put a lot of effort into our city. So we've never heard of this before. And the conference, of course, was nothing to do with that topic or that subject in any event. Uh, this was about church planting and about evangelism and of growing churches, and Larry was a great fit for all of that. Um, but now it seems as if you think the wrong thing, you get banned from public premises. And so we find ourselves having to pursue and reach for a judicial review, which we've never done before, but the outcome will affect every single church in the UK. So it's mm. imperative that we fight, and it's imperative that we win, so we trust in God. And, and Pastor, when you got the word from the center that the event was being canceled or being locked out. How did that hit you? What what happened emotionally to you when you got that report? We, we were just totally stunned. We were shocked and surprised that a city that we have a number of churches in, that we have a great relationship with, we're heavily involved with the community, uh, we were shocked and stunned that they would take such an action. And at first, we went back to them for a full explanation. They didn't tell us how many people had complained. They made it out. There had been a huge complaint. And only when we applied for the freedom of information did we discover it was one person. Um, but we then asked them to reconsider. We explained our situation. We assured them even that the conference wasn't anything to do with that subject, that Larry is not known for that. Uh, but they'd made their mind up, and as the weeks have now gone on, they've become more belligerent and more adamant that they are going to do all that they can to defend that decision. And of course, mm. we have rights with the UN, we have the rights with the EU, of which we're still a part at the moment, and the UK law gives us rights, but the challenge we have is that our law has never been tested in this point, because it's never needed to have been before. 
And yeah. so there's no precedent. You know, we can't we can't apply an, an old precedent because it doesn't exist as yet. And so although the laws are there, we're now having to test them in court. But and, it's you know, a real challenging for, situation here because they they wanted to close you down, not just for saying things, but for thinking things now. Exactly. Listen, when God called me to get involved in LGBT issues, that the T word wasn't even prominent then in, in 2004, I immediately saw as I began to research this that gay activism was the principal threat to freedom of religion, speech, and conscience in America and in other nations. And I saw that those who came out of the closet wanted to put us in the closet. And people say, well, why do you make such a big deal about this? We're not focusing on the sin so much. Yeah, we believe that homosexual practice is sinful, but it's the agenda in the society to indoctrinate our children in the schools and to silence the yes. voice of the church. I, I mean, we're not exaggerating when we say this. And the thing is, Scotland has a great Christian history. You know, the country of John Knox and, and, and the UK yeah. has such a great Christian history, and yet things are shifting now where Christians are becoming the outlaws. How many times have street preachers been arrested or harassed for just answering a question? They're not even preaching on homosexuality. Someone asks them a question, they respond. The next thing, you're intimidating me. It's hate speech. So this must be dealt with. And just like Paul in the New Testament said, hey, I'm a Roman citizen. I have certain rights. It is right for us to stand up. So... Folks, we want to encourage you to be praying for righteousness, praying for churches across the UK to stand together. And, and Pastor, what else could folks do on a practical level uh, in America, in UK, around the world? What can they do right now on a practical level to help? Well, there's, there's two things. One, please pray, because it's imperative that we win this case. It will affect every other church. Um, but we've opened a crowdfunding page to raise the funds needed to pay for our legal fees, which will be about £150,000. So that's maybe $180,000, we think. And that's beyond our local church budget. So, But, you know, it was the last thing we wanted to do, but we believe now it's the right thing to do. And we, we would appreciate financial support towards these legal fees. We've got a great legal team who are doing all that they can. We think we've got the best team and um, the law's on our side, so we believe in God for a great victory. All right, and what's the website to go to, sir? DestinyGlasgow.com. All right, DestinyGlasgow.com. And let me just tell our team, Kai and Matt, let's just pull this out as a video that we can post on social media separately with that link again, DestinyGlasgow.com. And one key thing is, as, as you know, but I want to encourage you, to the extent you can get other churches, other leaders, other groups, because as you say in your video, this, this could affect Jews, this could affect Muslims, this could affect Christians exactly. of various denominations and backgrounds. It, it's, it's a large freedom of speech issue, not just only a Christian issue. May the Lord be with you. Yeah. May you stand strong. May Scotland do the right thing. God bless you, brother. Thanks for calling. Thank you, Dr. Brown. God bless. All right. <laughs> 